Well, since he started so young, he got his bachelor's in mathematics at the age of 18, and he went on to get his master's the following year, and then he started his PhD. During this time, he was writing songs which were parodying uh, lyrically and musically uh, popular songs of the time, and performing around Harvard at various functions. He had formed a quartet with some of his friends uh, due to a quartet competition being set uh, for which they were the only entrants. Uh, in which case, in that case, they were refused the prize, so they just stood outside the hall and sang anyway. His friends went on uh, to lead productive lives. However, Tom Lehrer stayed behind and continued performing at these functions uh, on his own as a solo artist. Uh, in 1951, for example, uh, Dr. Lewis Branscombe uh, was teaching physics at Harvard, and he told them to make sure to uh, attend his final lecture because it was going to be a review for the exam. The students arrived for the final exam, for the final lecture, to find that Tom Lehrer, uh, Dr. Branscombe, and Tom Lehrer, some, some of Tom Lehrer's friends had wheeled in a piano into the room, and they proceeded to put on a show. Uh, which they called the Physical Review. And this was about uh, physics, maths, and life at Harvard. Uh, these included uh, Tom Lehrer's academic songs that he had been writing, including the derivative song, which is about differentiation, calculus, rather than a song by Oasis. Uh, it also included the Calypso, there's a delta for every epsilon, uh, which has lyrics there's a delta for every epsilon, it's a fact that you can always count upon. There's a delta for every epsilon, and now and again, there's also an n. Again, very specifically mathematics, that one. And other songs included Don't Major in Physics, amongst others. Uh, recently, a, a recording of this has turned up on the internet, so you can now hear all these songs again. And at the end of the at the end of the show, uh, the students were sprayed with snowflakes made from a CO2 fire extinguisher, uh, and it ended with thunderous applause. Two cast members of that of that show uh, went on to become uh, advisors to presidents. Uh, one of them became a photographer for Time magazine, and three of them went on to become highly regarded professors. Now, another song from that show uh, later became a chemistry teacher favourite. It's simply a, a list of the chemical uh, elements of the periodic table. <laughs> Arsenic, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, zirconium, lutetium, vanadium, and lanthanum, and osmium, and astatine, and radium, and gold, protactinium, and indium, and gallium, and iodine, and thorium, and thulium, and thallium. There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, and boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, bromine, lithium, beryllium, and barium. There's holmium and helium and hafnium and erbium and phosphorus and francium and fluorine and terbium and manganese and mercanium and lignum and magnesium, dysprosium and scandium and cerium and cesium and lead, praseodymium and platinum and plutonium, palladium, promethium, potassium, polonium and tantalum, technetium, titanium, tellurium and cadmium and calcium and chromium and curium. There's sulfur, californium and fermium, berkelium and also mendelevium, einsteinium, nobelium and argon, kryptonium, radon, zinc, zinc and rhodium and chlorine, carbon, cobalt, copper, tungsten, tin and sodium. These are the only ones of which the news has come to Harvard. And there may be many others, but they haven't been discovered. What's so interesting about this is it's not just a list of the chemical elements. It involves eternal uh, rhymes, alliteration, and other groupings. And it's this sort of internal structure that Tom Lehrer found so interesting because it meant that you found something more on repeated listening. Uh, Pythagoras himself uh, wrote a similar song, but it was much shorter. Then technology came to 
raise Tom Lehrer's career up to the next level. You see, LPs have just been introduced, uh, and these were to replace the old 78s. LPs held six times as much music as the old 78s, and they were also less brittle, uh, they were cheaper to produce, they were lighter and so easier to ship. Uh, so, after asking his friends and, and finding out uh, how many he could sell, Tom Lehrer decided it would be a good idea uh, to finally commit some of these songs uh, to, to record. He had about 12 that he was happy to commit uh, for, pos for prosperity. Uh, so he made his first songs by Tom Lehrer. Well, he looked up in the Boston Yellow Pages uh, studio recordings and there was two listings there. Uh, these days you'll have four columns of, of studios but uh, in those days there was just two and he phoned them both. One was rude to him, and the other was nice to him, so he went with the latter. And he recorded his album in just one hour. Uh, it was 22 minutes long, the album. Uh, he had performed the song so many times that he just took one take. Uh, if he did make a mistake, all they did was just re-record over the previous take. Uh, the session cost him $15, uh, and one hour later he was one master tape richer. Uh, his friend drew the cover uh, to Tom Lehrer's specifications, uh, designed specifically to save on printing, and, and Tom Lehrer himself wrote the liner notes. Uh, so every expense was spared. He then started to sell these records around campus. Uh, the, the songs included uh, one of my, one of my favourites, I Hold Your Hand in Mine, which was uh, which is a song about a, a murderer, a love song by a murderer uh, to his lover, all that remains of which is her hand. Uh, other songs included the old dope peddler, which was uh, singing the virtues of someone who does so much for the community, such as the dope peddler, uh, an unsung king of hero. This was a parody of songs, sentimental songs that were going on around the time like the old lamp lighter and uh, the academic song Lobachevsky which is a song how to get ahead not just in mathematics but how to get ahead in any academic field <laughs> a Russian accent. 